let's have a look at this thing we call a logarithm. Right? Now, inverse, you may remember we talked a little bit about inverse functions earlier in the year. We'll certainly look at them in more detail next year. But uh, the logarithms are the inverse to an exponential. The inverse functions, you may remember, is basically it's what you do to undo something. So division being the inverse of multiplication, for instance, and things like that. So to undo an exponential, you log both sides and whatever. So if y is equal to a to the power of x, that's the exponential. So if I want to make x the subject, then we log it. And so x becomes the log of y base a. So the base doesn't change. Whatever the base is, the base is. Well, with a log, we put it as a uh, subscript. Whereas with a, a, an index, it's the base and the x becomes the superscript. We're going to look uh, in a lot more detail with this particular uh, exponential function, the one where the base is e, which is another irrational number. And when we log that, we get log base e, which is known as the natural logarithm. Okay. Another way of writing it is ln. Uh, it comes from the French, logarithm naturel. Because they say things funny in French, they put the words backwards and that. Uh, but it also explains why you have an in button on your calculator. It's not actually an in button, it's actually L a natural logarithm. Uh, another way you might see a natural logarithm written is just without writing a base. Now once upon a time, that used to stand for base 10. And that's back when we used to use log tables. And they were what were known as common logarithms, base 10. Uh, and when we use the base 10 tables to do all sorts of things. So they were sort of the standard log everyone used. So log without a base, everyone thought, oh, that's base 10. But now that we don't really use log tables anymore, basically use calculators, then the standard that everyone uses is a natural logarithm. So it now comes to mean um, the natural logarithm, another way of writing it. So log without a base is a natural log, we will assume. Ln definitely is. But of course, if we write base E down, that, that is the natural logarithm as well. So the natural logarithm. Okay, let's uh, draw up a curve. Well, because it is the inverse of the exponential, and you may remember with inverse functions, they're reflections in the line y equals x. So if you were to get your exponential curve and reflect it in y equals x, you get this sort of shape. That is if the base is greater than 1. We know that with an exponential curve, it always has a y-intercept of 1. So if we reflect that through, our x-intercept always becomes 1. If the base was in between 0 and 1, then it would be reflected in the x-axis. Much like with your exponential curves, if the base is between 0 and 1, it's reflected in the y-axis. So same sort of idea. Domain of a log curve, or our basic ones that we're looking at here. X is greater than zero, we can see that from the curve. You don't find the log of a negative number. And the range is all real y, it is a continuous curve, so it will cover the whole of the, the y values. Okay, we need some laws or rules to do the uh, mathematics with the logs. And they're basically, again, the index laws, but inverted. So you remember with an index law, we had, ah, oh, well, if we're multiplying, we add the powers. So with logs, it's, oh, when we add them, we multiply. So we get log of m plus log of n is the log of mn. And this is where, uh, before calculators, log tables were really useful, because if you had to multiply two numbers together quite large, you'd look up your log table to find, well, what's the log of m and what's the log of n? Because it's a lot easier to add two numbers together than it is to multiply two numbers together. So you would add the logs, and then you had a, another set of tables known as anti-logarithms, and then you could go back and then read off that and go, oh, well, so what's my answer? That's what we used to do before the calculators. Uh, similar one then with the index laws. With division, it's we subtract the logs. And with the powers, we bring the number to the front. And of course, we've now seen something else that's very similar, I should say, to that, and that is, of course, the arguments when we're dealing complex numbers. Not a coincidence, uh, it's because complex numbers can be written as exponentials. So x plus iy can actually be rewritten not only as r outside of cos theta plus i sine theta, it can also be rewritten as r times e to the power of iota theta. So the arguments in the power, so very much like our log laws then. 
Well, we have an index law which says anything to the power of zero is one. So the inverse of that is the log of one is always zero. Uh, this one here comes from any number to the power of one is its own number. So the inverse of that is log a base a is always one. And this is just about inverses cancelling. If I raise a to the power of log base a, well then the exponential and log cancels and you just get x. But of course the bases must be the same for that to work. Number seven here is what's known as the change of base law. Uh, I guess the reason that's useful, if you want to get a, uh, a, an approximation on your calculator, because your calculator can't just have any base on it, there'd be so many buttons. Uh, so they basically just have base 10, the common ones, and the natural ones. So if you had to work out a log to another base and actually wanted an approximation, you convert it to, well, base 10 or, or natural base, it doesn't matter. But it's basically the log of the number you're trying to find divided by the log of the base of the original question. And so long as you keep the base the same, it'll work. Okay, let's start with some really basic ones here. So x equals log 125 base 5. Well, yes, I could go use that change of base rule and plug it into a calculator. Or I could think about what this is saying. Remember, 5 is the base, and it's now the opposite to, uh, to exponentials. So instead of saying 5 to the power of 125 is what, we're saying 5 to the what is 125. And in case you're unsure, you can convert it to an exponential equation if you like. 5 to the power of x is 125. Oh, okay. x would be 3. This one then is not saying x to the power of 343 is 3, it's actually saying x cubed is 343. Because right? if you rewrote that one, it's x to the power of 3 is 343. So the base for this particular question would be 7. This would be base 7 we're talking about. Really the same question, but just not using a pronumeral. <laughs> They're just simply saying, oh, what is log 16 base 4? So again, we're saying, oh, well, 4 to the power of what is 16? Now, you could really use your log laws all the way if you wanted to, because you could say, oh, 16, hang on, I know that's 4 squared, so if I rewrite it with the same base, then I've got another log law which says, oh, I can bring 2 to the front. Oh, hang on, there's another log law that says the log of a number 2 the same base is always 1. So log 4 base 4 is 1, and we get to the answer 2. So we could do it with three lines of working out, or as I say, we could simply look at it and go, oh, 4 to the power of what? 16. Oh, 2. There's my answer. We said that uh, the exponential and the log will cancel, but I can't do that with this one, because I don't have log base 6. I have 2 log base 6. So I need to this time get the 2 and put it inside the logarithm. So that would be the same as log 3 squared base 6. Now that it's the exponential to the log, I can cancel because they're the same bases, and I'm left with 3 squared, which is 9. So before you do the cancelling, the coefficient of the log has to be 1. That's what we're basically saying there. Okay, I want to add two logarithms together. Uh, but, oh, look, they're the same base. Brilliant. Uh, when we're adding we multiply. So 16 times 8 so is 1. Is that right? 16 8 to 128. Oh, okay, where you go. And of course, 128 is 2 to the power of 7. And so 7 is the answer. Another way you could have done it, I suppose, you could have said, oh, 2 to the power of what is 16, which would be very good, 4. 2 to the power of what is 8, and 4 plus 3. Seven. So we, we could have done it that way. Whoa, base 10. Now, here's a bit of a problem because 10 to the power of what is 125? Oh. Oh, well, let's do the next one. 10 to the power of what is 32? Oh, no good. Let's do uh, the last one then. 10 to the power of what is 4? Oh. Uh, but look what happens, it's magic. Multiply 125 with 32, divide by the four. Oh, that's a thousand. And now I can go 10 to the power of what is a thousand. Yeah, I was expecting it to be a bit quicker, but uh, yeah, three. So we work out that one. Ooh. 
log 8 base 7 divided by log 2 base 7. But this is one where I could use the change of base rule in reverse. See how it's got a fraction with the logs? So I could have said, hey, that might have been log 8 base 2, but it's just been changed to base 7. And 2 to the power of what's 8? 3. So we could get that one out. Or you could go to your calculator and change the base of 7 to, to 10 or E, and then change uh, the base of the bottom one to 10 or E, then press the buttons on the calculator and eventually get 3. But that would take a lot longer. <laughs> the log of the square root of 1 eighth base 2. So can we rewrite 1 eighth as 2 to the power of something? Yes, we can. Because I can bring the half to the front. Then 1 eighth is the same as 2 to the power of negative 3. I then have log 2 base 2, which would cancel, and I get half of minus 3, minus 3 on 2. Exponential equations, this is where logs were really useful, of course. Mind you, I don't know that I'd necessarily use uh, logs for this one because I can rewrite 1 on 27 as 3 to the power of something. So it's probably quicker to rewrite that one as 3 to the power of negative 3. So the basic ideas are still good if they work. Uh, we have x is negative 2. Unfortunately, with something like this, I can't do that. So logs, useful. So we log both sides. Bring the x out the front now, use my log laws. Now I can divide by 2. And uh, basically, again, you've got your change of base. So effectively, what you've done is you've gone 2 to the power of x equals 9. Hang on, that base doesn't work. So I want to change the base. So effectively, that's what you've done there. And uh, punching that into the calculator, we get, well, it's two decimal places, 3.17. So 12a... But also in 6b, just question 8 there. <laughs> what the heck? So let's play with the log laws. 